we're gonna talk about two things, friends. One, does the A6000 still hold up after all these years? Or is it time to upgrade? And two, I need your help to decide the future of the Sony A6000 on this channel. And before I tell you how you can help me, let me explain what I need help with and why it matters the most to you. Let's start with the first topic and let me delve into the good old memories for a second here with you. It has been more than 10 years since this camera came out and in about past four years I've been on this YouTube journey constantly creating videos about our beloved Sony A6000. Remember the original review video of A6000? Over the years it has gotten almost a million views and that is insane. And the POV street photography in Copenhagen? Oh, we got some really good shots that day and actually it was the reason why I made the Copenhagen preset pack because, because of you guys as you were all the time asking how I edited those photos. And I think the majority of you subscribe to my channel because of these videos and I'm gonna say huge thanks to all of you who have been here from the early days. Fun fact, did you know I got the A6000 by accident? My primary camera, the A7 II, broke down while waiting for the repairs. I just wanted some cheap replacement for a couple of weeks. And little did I know how incredibly important this camera would turn out to be. Oh my. So, am I saying A6000 is not good enough anymore? Not at all. I've always told you it has plenty of megapixels to get high quality and good resolution photos. It is super light and compact and it fits all the modern lenses and especially now there are just so many new APS-C lenses, it is incredible. And that's actually where the secret is with this camera. You want to use good quality lenses on it. You can definitely still use it as your daily camera for your hobbies, you know, as well as a tool to learn the photography itself. But before we get to the drawbacks, take a look at this amazing digital frame from our today's sponsor, Bexar, a brand by the professional photography company Lexar I got sent so I could display my favorite Sony A6000 pics and they look so good on this 2K matte display that does not reflect any light, as is the case with regular frames. Sleek design, high quality materials, and looks good on your wall or on this magnetic stand, vertically or horizontally. The display itself is a touchscreen, so you can zoom into these photos, control the brightness, and let me tell you, the colors are really rich. The display also shows you the time and the weather as it's connected with the Wi-Fi and using it is super straightforward. Just insert any mainstream SD card. The frame supports images in multiple formats such as JPEG, PNG and many more supporting 2K and 4K or videos. Alternatively, just use the Frameio app to share um, them from your phone directly. And even the box it came in is in with an environment in mind, doubling as a storage box. How cool is that? There is a link in the description if you want to check it out. Thank you, Pexar, for sponsoring this video. And getting back to those drawbacks, A6000 does have some, and probably one of the biggest ones is that the gap between the new camera, like A6700 and A6000, is big and it's growing. New cameras have better thought out menu systems better autofocus and AI features and all these things help you as a creator do more photography and less camera handling. The second is the video performance. You know, it is nowhere near where you want it to be now as it lacks the mic jack and the 4K, but for photography and regards to quality of photos, man, this camera has a lot of juice left in it and especially for beginners. So, if it's not about the A6000 being good enough, then what am I saying? Well, looking back, I've done countless autofocus tutorials, the POVs, best lenses, settings, and at this point, I feel like I have taught you all the ins and outs of the Sony A6000, and you and I both have grown significantly. So I ask myself, is there anything else left to teach and show around A6000? Or is it time for us to move on newer cameras, like Sony A6700 or the upcoming a7 V, for example. This is exactly where you come in. I need your help deciding. I want to make content that helps you grow as a creator and it's important for me to know what matters most to you because I want to keep things useful and relevant for your creative journey. Even if you decide to move on from the A6000, I've got so many exciting things already planned. Lots of new tutorials, more interesting gear reviews and more epic travels. Finally, how can you help? 
For this video, just drop a comment below answering two simple questions. One, where are you from? Because I really love getting to know you guys. And two, do you still want more A6000 content? If yes, what's left to cover? Or if you think it's time to move on, what are you most excited to see next? And please note, whatever you decide, this doesn't mean I'm getting rid of this OG anytime soon. And I definitely don't want to make you upgrade for the sake of upgrades. If you feel like there are still things for you to learn around this camera, please do. And check the A6000 playlist because it has ton of videos as you could imagine by now. I'm sure I will still use this awesome camera plenty and it's gonna pop up on your screens once in a while unless you choose to see it every week. We see each other in the next one and as always, keep on creating.